Yo, what is going on, guys? We're back here with another Elevate interview. This has got to be 20-some at this point. We've been just racking out a bunch of these for you guys, just getting these members' experiences here. I'm with none other than my good friend, Blaine Bercy. Blaine is a very valued member of Elevate, a good friend of mine down in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we've had the opportunity to grow a relationship and faith a lot over a lot of phone calls, talking about life in general, and just having him a part of this community. It's been just such a blessing to know this guy. Um, and I'm just so blessed to be able to dive into his story. He's got a lot of cool things that have just happened recently we'll dive into and just his experience in the community here. But without further ado, what's up, dude? What's going on, man? I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're going to do this with me. You know, uh, <laughs> we're going to do it with Matt, but uh, Matt's having some issues. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be fun. He, might, he probably want to just bail on it. I don't know. He's going <laughs> to yeah, throw these been. at me. <laughs> oh, I got to make fun of that guy. He, he That man will just... He will dish it out, man. Seriously, you got to give it back to him sometimes. We love Matt, though. <laughs> Such a good dude. Um, but, dude, just want to kind of dive in right away and just kind of have you give a background kind of who you are and just kind of what your day to day life looks like and kind of just a little bit of background on you before we dive into some questions and just breaking apart your story. Sure. How far back should I go? <laughs> man, bring me back to like just high school days, childhood, kind of just your upbringing. Okay. And we'll go from there. So, um, I grew up pretty much in Florida. Um, I grew up in the faith pretty much my entire life. I don't really remember a time of, I guess, not being a Christian in some way. Like it was always, uh, my parents were Christians. I grew up in a Christian household. Uh, so to me, we, uh, me and my brother always knew about God, about Jesus. And, and that was just part of our lives, like Wednesday night service and then Sunday morning church. I was kind of known as the church kid, at least um, when I got into high school. Like, I wouldn't go out to parties. I stray student, go to church twice a week. All my friends were um, in in church. We were like youth leaders. Funny enough, they're all pastors kids too. So like, <laughs> I just put myself around them and we're all in good shape. And then off to college, well, actually, no, I, I played sports. So I was a football and soccer player in, in high school. And I went to college to play football. And football for me was like my favorite hobby in the world. I, I was a kicker and punter in high school. And uh, I knew that was my way in, into college. I didn't really think uh, my parents could afford sending two kids off to, to college because it's really expensive. Um, but fortunately for me, kicking was my way in and I got a, a lot of scholarships doing that and through my grades. But regarding faith, like I went to school in, in New England and here in Florida, man, like it's called the Bible Belt. You don't really need to be afraid to talk about Jesus because someone in some way has, has heard of him. It's how they grew up. It's, it's just part of the culture here. Um, but you know, up in New England, like people don't really they don't go to church. There's a lot of like, uh, say a lot of Catholic churches There's a lot of more like very traditional churches. So if you are going to church up there, um, it's very intentional, but it's not like the average family is doing that. So um, I got to team up with so one of my football player uh, teammates from California, he, he was a Christian. And we synced up before training camp and we decided to be roommates. So that was like, nice. Two of us are out of state. That's kind of a good thing for us because we're both getting to learn how college works, how it is like to be away from home. Um, and we're both Christians. So this, we keep each other accountable. And that, that was good for the first year. Uh, but I realized I didn't have many friends <laughs> that were like that. <laughs> and um, I would hang out with my friend who was the punter for my football team. And we, we were like, we're still best buds now. And um, I just noticed my little friend group wasn't Christian at all. And as I got older, I turned 20, 21. You know, drinking's not, um, it's not voodoo to anyone up there. So that's something that I started doing. And then naturally, uh, well, not really naturally, around the same time, Tinder came out. <laughs> and man, that... Uh, that app is something else. <laughs> That's all For I can sure. say. Uh, dopamine hits like crazy. Um, I didn't really get, I didn't feel like I got a lot of attention in high school. So whenever this app comes out, you know, football player in college, put, put down a profile and it's like, you get a lot of hits and it's like, you know, it's social media. It's exciting. It's, it's interesting. And uh, I kind of fell into that trap. And I, I fell in that for a handful of years. 
um, until even after college. And it wasn't until rather recently where I wanted to just ditch all that out together and uh, just not be a part of that culture. I get to, it's a sick culture, but it's very easy to get stuck in it. But um, yeah, so for school, I'm trying to double, double back here on what, <laughs> on what I actually do. So I went to school for math. Uh, I learned how to code during school and on my own. And for a job, I end up chasing the software engineering route. So I've, I've been doing that for the last six years and I still do that. Work from home, pretty, pretty simple life is, a, is what I can put. Nice, man. I kind of want to touch back on your early days of faith. You talk about living sure. boldly, you know, it's, it, you said you talk about like the Bible belt. Uh, <laughs> I want to kind of talk like, how did you live boldly even in your younger years with faith? You talk about always being brought up, you know, in the, in the church, you're a youth leader. Um, always involved in some way, shape or form. How did you live boldly in your faith growing up? Um, I think the, the best way I was able to do that was just the environment I was in. Like, uh, so my brother's two years older than me and his, he ran track and his coaches were Christian. They were members at our church. So I remember in, even in high school, uh, we would go to his classroom one of the teachers classrooms early in the morning and we would have our own little Bible study. I think it was called FCA. Yep. I don't know if that still exists now, but so I was in that, like, of course, my brother there, I have teachers who are coaches who are there. I have friends who are church leaders. It was just very easy to just be me. Cause that like, all I cared about were the people I was hanging out with, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there, if, if they had something to say that was like negative towards me, like I would take that very personal because like they're close friends. Mm -hmm. So um, to me, it was very easy to just be a Christian guy in school. But um, I can also say like, I grew up that way, too. So like, I didn't really know what life was like otherwise. Like I used to um, kind of look back and think I was a little naive on certain things like. Yeah, of course you shouldn't drink beer. Like it's stupid. Why would you do that? Like you're just sinning. <laughs> but then <laughs> if I actually have a beer. I'm like, oh, this is that bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um a lot of it was just through being innocent. Didn't know how any of that stuff was. So it was very easy just to be like, Yeah, I don't need it. Like I'm good as I am. For sure. Sounds to me like you just had so much opportunity and blessings around you, so many different avenues growing up. Like you said, you have FCA. You had parents that were very structured in faith and you just had so many opportunities within the church also just to kind of live boldly in your faith. And like you said, make it such a such a normal thing that you didn't really know life right. outside of it is what it sounds like to me. Yeah. And then I saw a lot of success with that. I remember um, kind of like beginning of my freshman year, I, I, you know, first time in in high school, you don't really know anyone. So I found this kid who was in like five of my classes, but he was just a troublemaker. And I ended up being a troublemaker at the time too. And I ended up getting like poor grades. And then I remember like the next year, I'm like, I'm going to just do things differently. I'm like hanging out with this kid, I'm hanging out with my church friends. I'm going to do my homework when I should. And all of a sudden I like just had perfect grades, was doing well in sports, was getting stronger in the gym, growing in my relationship with Christ. Like <laughs> it was just like all success. So I was like, this is the way this works. Man, that's an even bigger blessing to, to have that self-awareness and wisdom as a young kid. I mean, mm -hmm. I know guys like myself and Matt and Payton that are early 20s. I mean, there's guys our age that are just starting to figure it out like ourselves. And there's people that even get to upwards of close to 30 around your age. And it's like there's guys still not figuring it out. And I think that's just such a blessing to be a freshman in high school and realize like, hey, I don't want to be the troublemaker. I don't want to yeah. sit here and get bad grades, get caught with drinking or doing drugs, whatever else kids are doing at that age. I mean, it's just something that is such a blessing to have that self-awareness for. Um, but kind of talk to me how that carried into college. You know, you talk about getting exposed in, into all this new world of everything. We've all been to that kind of college experience. If we've been in that situation, you talk about kind of struggling to find friends in college. Like, how did you kind of like cope or work around struggling to find friends when you're exposed to an environment like that while living boldly? That's a really good question. Um, I feel like I didn't really answer it, to be honest. Like, I know my first year, um, I definitely noticed me being that same Florida high school church kid because, um, like, I'm on the football team. Everyone in the football team joins the same fraternity. And I was like, oh, I don't know if, I, if I'm in on that. Like, I'm just not into that stuff. 
Um, so I was like one of three guys who did not join the fraternity in my, my freshman year. And then, um, a lot of those guys were just like, dude, new England, they're, they're a rowdy bunch. And I just was <laughs> not, not about it. Like I didn't know how to act in that way. Like that just was so out of my nature. So I just kind of stood out in a different way. Um, but I did have now friends who weren't like that either. And, and that was kind of my group I hung out with. Um, but not necessarily Christian people. For sure. So environment sounds like it was kind of lacking a little bit. It was just something that was really hard to find right away. Um, yeah. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then like, as I, as I go on, I end up meeting a, a few guys who are Christian. They, they had our own little FCA group in college. Um, but to me, it, it was really hard to go to. Um, even looking back, I probably should have been more. But it didn't feel like a family. I still felt attached to my friends in high school and I didn't really want to like have this new group, which isn't really a good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't I didn't really do that as much. And one of the guys who um, is on my football team, actually, he uh, was a super, super charismatic about his faith in a way. I didn't like it. And I just didn't want to be associated with that, like. It's not, it wasn't bad. It was just not the way I do this stuff. I'll be in a lot of like conversation with him and I just feel like I'm getting like talked over about like faith and stuff. I'm like, okay, I, I'm just not in on this. Like this is, this is like stressful and overwhelming. I'd rather just go back to my apartment and, and do nothing than go to these meetings and talk to you about this stuff. Cause it's like, it's, it's actually killing me. Mm, that's good, man. I think that's something that a lot of people relate to is, uh, you know, having just that stressful and fearful relationship with God. So many people just fear God in an unhealthy way. I mean, there, yeah. there's a good, a bad, healthy kind of fear um, that I just feel like a lot of people lack in, in faith today. And I mean, it, it definitely drives people away. And, and uh, it just sounds like, once again, you live boldly in that sense of like, hey, I'm going to stay in my own lane, build my relationship with Jesus. And that's what we talk about and Elevate a lot here, um, which we'll get into is just relationship over religion at the end of the day. And, and I think having that firm foundation that you grew up in is something that really just propelled you to, to know and discern the difference between good and bad faith and, mm -hmm. and genuine faith and knowing who to hang around with. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really grateful for it too. Cause like, as I graduate college and start um, navigating early adult life, um, those were the thoughts. Those were the times I would reflect on and be like, man, that was like, I know I was younger, but like, that was just a better time. Like I was just very stress-free, like doing what I needed to do at that, in that season. Well, why can't I go back? Like, I mean, I can't go back in time, but why can't I just start going to church again, start finding Christian friends? And, um, that, that was a big pivot point for me. Like probably when I hit like 23, 24, I remember just praying that a lot and it didn't really get answered for a few years, but I mean, I'm in good shape now. So it has been answered. <laughs> Absolutely. Was there ever any moments in your college experience where it was like, you were very tempted to go out, you were very tempted to party or go join the frat that you're talking about your freshman year with all your football teammates. Was there ever any pressure from all these worldly things and in this sinful nature that we know the college experience brings to be able to just go out oh, and indulge yeah. in? Yeah, it was around the tender stuff, right? So I remember... I think it was my sophomore year going to my junior year. I learned about this thing and it just brought so much dopamine. And I like, I guess it just, I learned like, Oh, girls like me. At least think I'm attractive. Okay. That's kind of cool. And I go back. So I learned this over the summer and then I go back to school and I'm like, well, I'm 21, this new thing. So everything was just like a big dopamine hit. Like, Oh, I can't wait for Friday to go out and meet new people and talk and, he was into me and honestly i think a big part of that was just ha no experience in high school kind of um insecure about that stuff early on so i <laughs> kind of overdid it in college and yeah there was a lot of like i guess will to do it and then i um looking back i was like yeah that, that was stupid <laughs> but that god taught me some lessons through that season for sure so you talk about getting that dopamine hit from like that next match or that next message or that next time yeah. you're going to meet up with somebody. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you kind of worked around 
getting out of that that phase, I guess, or not not buying into that cheap dopamine and getting it from another another source, I guess. So um, that one I had to learn just through just through the school of the school of life, you know. <laughs> not really uh, learning through wisdom, just learning through just bad experiences. Um, I would go on dates and then I would see the girl. I'm like, who the hell is this? <laughs> like, you're not who I thought you were. Yeah. And just over time, it was just like the same story of like, I'll go out with someone. It wasn't interesting or there was no connection. You know, I'd, some girls I'd sleep with. And I'm just like, this sucks. Like this, it felt good in the moment, but this is all over. And like, you know, I just feel like crap. Mm-hmm. And after just a handful of times, I'm like, this, this isn't working. Mm-hmm. And then I take a break three or four months. I'm like, oh, well, let's try a new, new app comes out. Hinge. Oh, let's try this thing. Oh, this is pretty, people seem pretty normal here. Not just like college chicks, whatever, <laughs> but they'd be the same story. Like I, I talk forever. Cause I, don't know, I guess I suck at this stuff at the time <laughs> and then uh, go on a date. And then it just wasn't it. I'm like, th- I, I'm just not into this stuff. Like this isn't it, <laughs> um, but it took a handful of years for me to like stop feeling like crap and then like do something about it. Like you're gonna feel like crap every time you match a girl and you go out with her and you do things you shouldn't be doing with her. You come back home now, all day shot. Mentally, you're defeated. Spiritually, you're defeated. Like how many times you can keep doing this until you just stop? Mm-hmm. And um, funny enough, it was like three or four years ago at this point when I just did it one last time and I went home and I felt like the most spiritually defeated in my life. Like as simple as just being rejected. Like I remember this girl like kicked me out and I mean, rejection I faced a lot of times, like and that's fine, but I've never felt this feeling like this feeling sucked. <laughs> and um, I remember for three days I was just sitting in my bedroom, just like kind of mopey, like, why am I so depressed? Like what the hell just happened? Um, listening to like some Christian metal songs I like and found at the time. And I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Like we're done. Cut, cut porn, uh, cut all the dating apps. Just stopped. That was it. (laughs) Like say no more. And I, I mean, I don't think it was just me making that decision. I think it was God working for me the entire time. And in this season too, I, I was big, I'm a big listener to Steve Weatherford. You know who he is. Yep. And he was, he was preaching on his podcast about cutting like bad habits and, or, or just starting a good habit. And the, the thing he would say is just go one more day. So I'm like, okay, well, that's easy. I'll just quit porn today, quit Tinder, quit all these stupid apps and just go another day. And that was just my mentality, but also God working through like me being at a very low spiritual point and him just working in that season. So, I mean, I still, that was years ago and I haven't looked back. It's awesome. I love it. So you kind of talk about going through just these moments of just feeling defeated spiritually in those moments of like, the shame, the guilt, the rejection that the enemy loves to plant in us when we fall into his traps of sin or we, our own free will just gives into like this cheap dopamine of the world. Um, was there any big moments that you had like that, that you really felt that shame and guilt and rejection before you gave it all up? Or was it pretty, pretty steady throughout it? Or how did, how did the enemy kind of like try to take you out through that? Um, it, it would get, it would get, it would get worse. Or I guess you can say it got, got better. Like that shame would get, would be stronger and stronger and stronger every time. Um, I remember uh, COVID happened. I, I moved back to Florida and I just got with the wrong person. And then it was like, funny enough, like in that, that world, that sexual world, it was like the best I've had, but also like the most shame I've ever felt. I'm like, I know who I am. I know where I've been for all these years, the God I worship, the Jesus I worship, what is this? Like, what am I, why am I still doing this? And it would just get worse and worse and worse. So I make that decision and just, you know, screw it. We're done. Like, this is not it. Like God has so much more for me to do than 
this stuff, like porn every night, matching girls for myself, not for a relationship. So mm -hmm. yeah, like that shame would just, it, it, it built higher and higher. Absolutely. And so you have this firm foundation and faith, but this shame to be able to overcome and combat, you know, did you battle it with scripture? Was it prayer? Was it more time in fellowship with like-minded believers or like, like you said, the Christian metal? I know you and I have related on, on uh, <laughs> being, being metal lovers. I know Gabe, if Gabe's listening to this, he's going to appreciate it too, because he's a metal lover himself. But like, was there any thing that you used in your, your battle with that shame already being deep in your faith? to be able to combat that, I guess, for anybody listening that's maybe struggling with their own mm. shame, trying to get over the hump. So uh, the biggest one for me was just prayer. Um, in this season of life, I didn't really have anyone to talk to about this stuff. Like it would have been weird to be like, how do I quit porn? And if you're like, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but people still think that, right? People outside of our circle. Um, so I didn't know who to talk to, but for me, it was just like praying and meditating, just like sin alone, listening to, to, uh, to me, Christian music, um, worship music, more importantly, praying and then, um, getting more outside influence. So like I mentioned Steve Weatherford's podcast, his show at the time was all just faith, faith, faith focused. So I'm like, this is it. This is, this is me going to church in a way. Mm -hmm. And, um, really just like building, starting the, the building blocks of like kind of what I have now with Elevate, Gabe, Joey, my friends here, and um, like my church now, like to me, I had to have my mind right. And that was the best way for me to do it because um, I didn't have a, a circle. I didn't have anyone to talk to, but I knew I had my relationship with God <laughs> and I couldn't just ignore him. And eventually 100%. he, he, uh, he answered some prayers and that's kind of how I started being more active in my faith and breaking that, that shackle of lust and all that stuff. That's awesome, brother. I'm super inspired just to hear that because so many people just run to so many other things than prayer. It's like, like faith is sometimes people's last ditch effort to get over that shame, that guilt or feed mm -hmm. their sinful pleasures more. So I'm just insanely inspired by that. Um, and it kind of turns me into asking about the Elevate community because you talked about having a community of like-minded believers, obviously local, like Gabe and Joe. And then you had Matt before Matt moved out of Florida, then to Colorado, um, and many other people around you. Um, talk to me a little bit about kind of how the Elevate community came about for you and how long have you been a member for? Yeah, so um, I guess I can't really put a number to it because I've been a member twice. <laughs> but uh <laughs> I don't know if Matt moved here first. I hired Matt for coaching. Mm -hmm. And um, I was shortly after I moved here, I was chatting with Gabe and Joe about just workout stuff. And uh, I, I threw him like, yeah, I really suck at deadlifting. And Joey's like, it's hire Matt. I'm like, you can do that. <laughs> and they can hire coaches. So uh, I, me and Matt connected. I don't even remember how. I think he may have just called me out of the blue. And we connected. And that was... Um, that was going to happen. We were going to get over a 500 pound deadlift. And just in that season, he's like, come, come to elevate, man. Like it's a new group I've made, I've made a bunch of guys just going to talk about Jesus and read, read the Bible together and our experiences. I was like, sure. <laughs> I got nothing to do. Like, sure. I'm in. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. um, when was that? I was like end of 22, I think maybe early 23. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, at the same time, I'm in like four or five groups. So I'm in like Gabe and Joey's group with Default Kings. I'm in Elevate. I'm in, uh, I did my, I joined my endurance team at this time too. So I'm in that group. And I just remember like talking to the three of them about groups. And Matt, funny enough, Matt's like, dude, you got to cut some groups out. So um, unfortunately, I did cut Elevate for a bit. But once other things started playing their role and started exiting doors started closing um elevate door open again i and i rejoined here in a, a few months ago i think it was april where are we now we're in july mm -hmm. might have been like march nice man i love it um what was kind of the propeller like you talked about some doors being closed what was kind of the propeller that kind of came came forth for you to join back in you know because you said you had a lot on your plate you got a job you got training you got in-person community, you got church, so many other online groups and communities. 
so you had taken a break from Elevate and you come back. What was kind of the, the propeller for that to come back? Um, well, I, I think so. Matt was Matt left Orlando, so I didn't get to see him as much anymore and I didn't really hear about what's going on in Elevate. <laughs> so um, that was one factor. And like I moved to a different apartment and I, I'm like, I'm a closer to Gabe and Joey, but um, around the same time, like uh, I was hanging out with my girlfriend a lot and then we broke up. That changed a lot for me too. I was like, well, time's more open. I can make more calls and stuff. Maybe it's worth joining back um, into Elevate and just being around a bunch of other like-minded dudes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You brought up another topic I kind of want to talk about within joining and rejoining. So you, talk to me a little bit about kind of the season that you were in after your breakup, you know, because I know that was kind of a rough period for you. I know we had swapped a little bit of conversation about it, but kind of talk to the listeners about, you know, what your experience was like through there and what kind of changed for you. Yeah. So just for some context, um, I was in a really good relationship, but I, I knew, knew it was just kind of wasting this girl's time. And it really, it really hurt me knowing that because I like we didn't have a bad relationship at all. And I've I've talked to some mentors like you know, Joe Lopez, for example, and he he put it pretty bluntly, like, dude, if I was your dad, if I was her dad, I'd be very angry with you, right? Because me and her, we were we're both twenty nine, so it's like get married or break up. <laughs> you can't really waste anyone's time. And um, yeah, so I. I had to end it and I didn't want to. And that was like tug of war, man. Like in my heart, I was like, I don't want to be lonely, but I don't want this girl to be pulled along for this ride when I'm only like 50% in. So that, that happens. And this is like early this year, January. And I've kind of noticed since then, like I didn't really know at the time uh, I, I spoke about it to my training group that I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just know I have to keep doing these things. So for me, it was um, continue this endurance track I've been on. Like I've been a weightlifter, like endurance is brand new to me. So it was very easy to just, like be done with it. But I'm like, oh, I know God wants me here. I know I need to be more active in church. And the word serve kept being brought up. Like a big thing I learned the last year was I'm doing a lot of these harder challenges so that people can kind of see what it's like to go from absolute nothing to doing something pretty crazy and seeing the, just like the change through it. And like, you know, this, this works physically this is how God works too. Right. Um, and I really want to use it as talking points and just show people like, yeah, you can do this stuff. Like it, it's not crazy. Um, but a big part of that stuff too is serving. So like going out, like my, my team did a hundred mile race in, in April and I committed to helping them out, like just doing what I can, right. Making sure they cross the finish line. And, um, yeah, that's just kind of been where I'm at now. Like I've since then committed to my own few races, just helping people out as I can and <laughs> working hard on the side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the word that you said, serve, man. That's a word that was really on my heart last summer too. Um, before, uh, I want to say it was probably like July or August, like last year, about a year from now. Um, I was really feeling stuck as well, like with my faith from that perspective, like serving, like, you know, I'm serving an elevate as a manager. Um, I'm trying to, to give to the church and give time, but I was just really surface level with it. It was just only what I wanted to do personally. And I just felt called to more. I kept feeling the, the call to serve. And when I finally took the jump and leave of faith, it literally took God putting the youth pastor at my church to personally reach out to me and ask me to serve at youth group, which led me to a plethora of different breakthroughs and blessings. And, and the reason I kind of bring that up is like, you know, you taking that opportunity to serve at the hunter miler that you talk about and so many other opportunities in your life. What kind of blessings have came from just having a servant mindset, you know, following that that standard that Jesus talks about? You know, he says the son of man came to serve, not to be served. And that's how we're supposed to recreate that image within ourselves. Talk to me about kind of the the blessings you saw come about from having a servant mindset. So there's been a few like physical blessings, like um, I found my own purpose and, and will in the endurance scene right now. Like I. 
I exited that serving session, right? <laughs> where you want to call it, um, wanting to do a 50 mile race and then a full Ironman. Um, two things that felt nuts. Like, again, I come from a weightlifting background. I haven't ran since high school. Um, so these, these are so out of my nature, but I wanted to do it out of seeing my teammates and the stuff they went through and like, dude, hundred miles is nuts. <laughs> it's a long way. It's a multi, multi day event. And I was like, man, if they're doing that, I gotta, I gotta jump in on the action. So, um, that definitely opened up when I started committing to those goals. Um, but I've also noticed just like spiritually, when you serve, people take note, people notice, like. They, they see the good in you. They see you have a heart. And just how you said, like, Jesus served. You know, he, he could have been king over the world and had all the riches and sound of th like a physical throne. Um, but I wasn't how he was going to get his message out. Like, he got his message out through serving and helping um, sinners. Mm -hmm. And I'm not exactly doing that. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not like a homeless guy traveling the world going to towns, preaching the gospel. But I do feel like as I serve in other groups and just helping a hand, like people see who I am and that in turn, I hope reflects who God is and it starts and people wonder or plant seeds. For sure. I, I love that. Um, kind of to talk back about how you, you grew through watching your team and travel training do a hundred miler. And we talk about the environment with the, the lab, kind of like you had the lack of like-minded individuals and now you bring it into that. It's amazing how when you serve and you get into a system of like-minded believers that in any, whether it's physical aspect of running a hundred mile race or it's going on a mission trip, say, or anything like that, mm -hmm. what it makes you grow with. Cause I know those guys in tribal training, they're savages, man. I mean, like they set the bar for people all around the world that are seeing what they're doing and, and to have you a part of that. Like you said, it makes you go from the, well, I'm just a weightlifter. I'm not a runner. Tonight, you just completed a 50 miler just recently, and you're on your yeah. way to doing full Ironmans. And it's like, just, it's so crazy to see uh, and such a blessing to see. Um, and one thing that I kind of want to just touch on here, another question within the community aspect to elevate with that is like, what aspect of the community has helped you grow the most from your so, time, both, both the first and the second time of being in there? <laughs> the, the thing I really like right now, um, so I'm not, I'm not as active as I should be. Um, but I, I really like seeing everyone's goals. I love going to that goals chat and just seeing what people are doing. I'm like, this is sick, dude. People are writing their goals down. They're doing some crazy stuff. Um, and that hypes me up too. Cause it's like, man, like I watch, I watch, uh, like Peyton do like these crazy, like 14 mile days. I'm like, what's he training for? <laughs> like <laughs> I'm training for a 50 mile. I got to like step it up. Right. So I, I love seeing that. Cause it, to me, like. Uh, I like seeing the guys who are bought in and they're sharing their goals. They're sharing their um, wins of the week and it, it gets me fired up. Mm -hmm. So my, that's sure. one of my favorite things, dude. I, I like, I look forward to every morning. Like, oh, there's people working on today. Oh, who's the, who did a workout today? Oh, sweet. <laughs> yep. I love that brother. And it's, uh, it's so cool to see, like you say, with the amount of goals, it's like what you think your goals might be. Someone's just 10 xing those with what they're trying to do, which like once again, sets the bar high with the group that we surround ourselves with. Um, you know, since we're on the topic of goals, kind of kind of talk to me a little bit about some of your goals that you have, um, you know, in, in all aspects of life, not just like physical running or faith, just all around. I mean, what are some of the goals that you you see and elevate that you're like, hey, I need to kind of expand into and, and work towards? Yeah, that's a good question. So I guess physical to start, my big goals are to just kind of sit in the season of endurance and just kind of soak up all the, all the things I can get out of it. Like, I, yeah, I'm getting an aero an aerobic base, but dude, there's, there's so many wins just going through these long days and you, you can pull thousands and thousands of lessons out of them. And they're, they're so different compared to just football and weightlifting. Like, I mean, I did a 50 miler, um, shoot, I guess it was last weekend. I, I went, I experienced things I've never thought I would experience. <laughs> um, I felt things I never thought I'd feel. And I never felt so depleted in like so many avenues of my body, like spiritually, mentally, like I've never felt this kind of defeated or not defeated, 
drained, very different word. <laughs> <laughs> um, so goals right now are just continuing that, right? Like I did 50 miles. Um, I have an Ironman set out for November. I committed to a team hundred mile event next year. And, you know, it's going to see what's going to happen with that. I do have some like spiritual goals of diving back. And so I'm moving back to Jacksonville. So finding a church and really tying into a community there. The church we joined here in Orlando, like it's been great, but I kind of yet to jump into a serving um, role. And I don't really know anyone, even though I've been joined, I've been here for about a year at this point. So really want to find a church that I like and can find cool people and kind of just have fellowship in proximity. I know um, here in Orlando, I have two friends now I can um, talk to, but when I go back to Jacksonville, I, it was back to zero. <laughs> <laughs> so really just taking a lot of what I've built here in the last two years and like using the, the things that I've learned here to uh, kind of go back and do life differently when I go back to Jacksonville. I love that brother kind of starting fresh in a way. Um, you talk about kind of going back to, back to kind of baseline with finding friends and community around. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just so, it's so cool to be able to step out into faith like that. You know, you talk about training for a full Ironman, a team hundred mile or finding a good church community and moving back across the state of Florida. I mean, dude, that's so many just insane goals that, I mean, I don't even think most people consider even doing one of those um, that you just <laughs> named off, which is crazy. It just shows the bar that you set for, for uh, just yourself and for others around you. Like you talk about having people seeing, seeing that change and that light in you. Mm -hmm. um, but dude, you mentioned you just recently did a 50 miler. I want to kind of dive a little deep into how that went for you and kind of your experience through it. And uh, you know, you kind of talk about what prompted you to do it a little bit, but just talk to me overall about, you know, how was the 50 miler, man? I mean, like so many people, a long run, ways. They, they run like five, 10 Ks, couple mile runs and, you know, uh, like myself, I just did a half marathon. I'm like, man, that's like five half marathons right there. <laughs> um, yeah. So just kind of talk to me a little bit about your experience and what it was like leading up to it and just all the way through it, man. Okay. So I'm going to back up and lead into it, if that's okay. So um, last year I was challenged by Gabe, Joey, and a, a, got a bunch of guys from their group to do a half. It scared me. Like, I, I'm a fit dude. I thought I was a fit guy. Like, I'm, I didn't want to say yes. I'm like, because I knew deep down, like, I, I ain't ready for that, dude. Like that's, that's some top level stuff, but all these guys were doing it right. Talking about environment guys were in environment. So I commit to doing it. And, um, through the process of me committing, I had to do different things. I had to find a coach. Well, first I tried this stuff, figured out it wasn't working. So I found a coach, I found co uh, Ryan Dreyer, favorite dude, love this guy. He is the best. Got me through the finish line of a 70.3. And when you commit to something so scary, um, you have to change up your lifestyle. So I, I change up everything. I stop weightlifting. Um, I'm running. I'm learning how to ride a bike. I'm learning how to swim. I'm doing all these things. And I, six months later, I finished this half hour, man, but I still have this new set of hobbies, this new lifestyle. You know, I talked about, I helped. I help my team do a hundred miles. So I, I do that. I train for that for a few months and go help them. And just seeing the effort of everyone doing these to me was nuts. Like a hundred miles is far, like and a half hour, man, you go a half marathon. That is far. That's very far for me. Running more than 10 minutes is far or was far. And <laughs> I didn't have to run that far in high school in football, whatever. So I'm seeing my team doing these crazy things and I'm just so inspired to like do that. Like maybe at the time I didn't want to run a hundred miles, but I was like, I can, I feel left out not doing this thing, right? There's 10 people running. Uh, four of us were pacing. We each had like 10 or 20 mile sections. I'm like, I just feel like I'm cheating myself by pacing. <laughs> so, um, so I committed to 50 miles. Well, at first I was going to do a 50 K, which is about 31 miles. And then one of the guys in the group was like, let's, let's do 50 miles. You'll feel way better. Um, so that, that's kind of how the idea of the 50 miles started, um, through this weird 
<laughs> one, a weird like peer pressure thing to do a half Ironman, um, learning to like all of these new disciplines and then just kind of riding the wave, sticking strong with running and biking and swimming. And um, it set me up to run a 50 miler. So that's, that's really how it started. And then the more I think about it, like before I even signed up, I was like, well, I'm a committed to half, I committed to a full Ironman. Um, I want to do the next hundred mile in a year. So in a, this was April. So around next April, a 50 mile, I need to run. Like it, it's just a stepping stone for the Ironman for the hundred mile. And it'll give me good experience because, you know, in a Ironman, you're running a marathon. Well, 50 miles is almost two of those for an Ironman you're running moving for 13, 14 hours, 50 miles, you're easily over 12 hours. So this is just good reps, good practice. So that's really why I decided to do it. Dude, that's incredible, man. I mean, I just <laughs> heard reps for practice for an Ironman. Like, like yeah. I've heard and the experience of how crazy an Ironman truly is and, and what comes to the table with that. And like you said, the commitment and lifestyle change, but I have yet to hear somebody say I'm doing a 50 miler to prep up for an Ironman. I mean, it, <laughs> it's uh, that's that's traditional. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. I mean, I, I've just found myself very unorthodox with things too, man, but that's just next level is I'm going to run a 50 miler to prep for an Ironman. But I mean, just hearing that commitment is just something so great, dude, because so, so many times people like they get to the start line or even the finish line of something like an Ironman or any competition for that point. They're like, I always could have done more, could have done more in, pre in training and prep and felt like it could have gone harder. Like, yeah. I don't think there's anybody that out there that's done sports or competitions in their life that has said, I wish that I wouldn't have trained as hard. And I just yeah. think that that's just <laughs> setting yourself up, for, yourself up for so much success in the future. Um, and like you said, running a 50 miler and soon to be a hundred miler and then turning into an Ironman. Like that, that is just so great, man. I, I love your mindset behind that because. I feel like so, so many times with running like myself, I sometimes get in my head of like, why am I even doing this? Why am I even doing this? I mean, 12, 13 hours, that's a long time to be out on the course. Your, your mind's probably wandering about those thoughts. Yeah. And that's one of the things I'm very fortunate to be in endurance right now is your why has to be, has to be good. I weigh lived there for, I feel like a long time, like over a decade, like, my why wasn't that great. And it's the reason why like, I never really hit a 500 pound deadlift. Like it's easy to go to the gym, but it's very easy to just like not do anything with it. But when you're running, dude, like every party wants to stop running. <laughs> Unless you start learning to like it. And like, this is, this is adventure. This is fun. And so, yeah, my why was really burned into the serving mindset. We talked about like, I want to be able to serve others. I'm very gifted athletically. I don't, I'm not really uh, mentally challenged when I have to do physical activities, if that makes sense. Like, for example, I code for work. It took me forever to learn how to code. I run into hurdles all the time, like just mental blocks. It, it just, it feels like I'm pushing a wall every time I'm learning something. When I'm doing an athletic ability, it feels like I got a win with me. Like, I'm just good. Like, it's getting easier. So uh, for me, a lot of this stuff helps me help people. So I, I know people struggle to train for 5Ks or they want to do a half marathon or they want to get stronger. Like, the big reason I do this stuff, one, because I'm good at it, it helps me help those who want to be good at it, too. Mm, that's good. And they want to start doing things, like, tough, like, Half marathon is not easy. You're running two, two and a half hours. Running a marathon is not easy. You're running five hours. <laughs> Having someone there who's been there to help you, just encourage you, like that's such a win. And that's kind of the person I want to be for others who um, want all the wins of getting physical W's, is what I call them. Mm -hmm. I love that, brother. And, it, you know, you talked about using your gifts. I think mm -hmm. so many times people don't tap into their gifts completely. And you say you've been blessed with an athletic ability. And I love how you said, like, I'm not wasting that. I'm using that in my servant mindset with it. Um, like Matt, Matt loves to point out people's gifts in them and what they, they have in them for a way that he connects with people. And he's constantly reminding me and other people that he's in close relationship with within the Elevate community of like, 
these are your gifts. This is what I see in you. Like, don't waste it. And I love how you, you have that mindset of not wanting to waste it um, mm-hmm. and want to get your full potential out of it. Cause so many people I feel like that have an athletic ability, they're not tapped into um, they're not tapped into what they truly can do until they have, like we say, once again, back to like-minded community um, within like tribal training and having elevate in your life um, and default Kings, just so many different avenues of it. Um, so I just love that you're not wasting an ounce of your potential. And, and quite honestly, man, I think you're just tapping into it. Like you said, you're still figuring out the endurance game. You're already going to do a hundred mile or an <laughs> Ironman like pretty soon. I mean, I'm, I just can't wait to see what the future holds for you soon with it. Yeah. My thought is just do the big things, just like soak up all the experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, talking about gifts though, like something I've really learned this season is um, this physical athletic uh gift I have, it's really just like opening, opening the windows for just other experiences that come in. So like in endurance, when you're doing these long things, like I mentioned before, you you experience so much different stuff, like 50 mile race, um, about 12 hours in, dude, I hit just a wall. Didn't want to walk, didn't want to stand. Like my, my body was shot. Like I was ready to just like fall over and be done. Um, I never would have felt that way in football, in a weightlifting setting. Like I've only was going to feel that after 12 hours of running because I willed myself to do this. Like I pulled a lot of lessons out of that. Like there's many times where you're going to hit a wall, but you have to keep moving. Like when I hit, I think it was like mile 45 or something. I had, I had to convince myself to run when I didn't even want to walk <laughs> and it sucked. Like every time you start running, it just sucked. Like everything hurts. Uh, but I knew the clock was ticking, the sun was going down and a storm was coming and I wanted to be done. So it's like, I can walk and, and make this two more hours or I could run and be done within the hour. So it's up to me, but yeah, just lessons like that. I've learned through this gift of, athletic ability and I'm excited to see um, getting some reps in this world and then being able to map that over to like the spiritual world will be awesome. Absolutely. I was going to ask, what's kind of your, your experience spiritually through, you know, seeing the life lessons and, you know, being challenged mentally and physically in a 50 miler, what did your spirit feel like afterwards? Like, were you spiritually filled or spiritually drained? Like, like how much you had to rely on God to help be your strength yeah, through those man. last five miles. I mean, how did, how did your spirit yeah. feel? I, I was very drained. So, uh, backing up to when we did a hundred mile on Zion a few months ago, uh, one of our guys was like, I have no spirit left to keep running. And I, what the hell does that mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, I got it, but I didn't really get it. And I a hundred percent know what that means now. Like you, um, you don't really want to do anything. It's like, it's almost, it's not depression. It's just like, I don't want to think about running a mile. I don't want to think about another race. I don't want to think about anything. I'm just like dead. I'm drained. I need to refill my cup. Um, and I, I, when I recognize that I was like, I, I've got to just find a good song to just like hone in on and just run to. And that really made a help just like kind of running in prayer, running into a worship song. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that, that's a weird feeling. Mm-hmm. I but, love how you talk about having a song, getting to, getting to choose, because for me with my half marathon, like the most I'd ever ran up to this point was 10 miles and yeah. I hit mile 11 and I started to have a cramp in my quad real bad. And I never experienced a cramp while running before. So this was an experience in itself. Mind you, it's starting to downpour rain and I'm just like, my clothes are starting to, like, I had this shirt on that I was wearing. So it's like really heavy. And <laughs> I'm just sitting here, like, just questioning it all. And at one point yeah. I click on, like, I'm sitting there kind of filtered through songs. Like what would just hit right now? And I put on make a way by elevation worship. Like that was my song. And I just had that on repeat for like the last three miles to get done. Knowing that I was mm-hmm. like having a cramp going, I'm in downpouring rain. I don't want to be here. I can't move any faster than I'm going, which frustrates me. <laughs> um, like it was just so, so draining, but to be able to have a song to rely on like that was something. Yeah. So, cool. so I relate to that. It really helped too. Cause like, um, I don't, I don't know who sings the actual song. The song's called worthy. Um, yeah. but one of, 
Uh, this guy I like, he does, he's like a metal artist, but him and his wife do a version of it and it's really good. I just like, I need, I need, I want, I kept shuffling music. You know, when you're running or doing something, you're just like play for 10 seconds. This sucks. I need something. That yeah. hit. <laughs> so this one stuck. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to even worry about changing songs. And yep. uh, I really just made me reflect on the whole day. Like yeah, I've been moving for 13 hours at this point. And let me just kind of lean in on God and why I'm doing this stuff and kind of just, so one of the things I learned is, um, well, I knew about it, but like when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, dude, he was out there for 40 days with no food. Mm-hmm. Like I imagine he felt worse than what I felt at mile 45. So like, um, just kind of like reflecting on that in the middle of me running, I'm like, uh, I'm kind of just getting it. I'm, I'm getting how Jesus was. Mm-hmm. I just, this guy is pretty cool. And For uh, sure. Yeah, like this is hard because I, I could, uh, he was tempted with everything. I, I'd be tempted to sit down and have water, but like, <laughs> you know, Saints offering more. Like, it, I wonder how tempting it is then too. I love that, brother. That's, uh, that's something so great how I like to say, you know, no matter the outcome, circumstance, trial, tribulation, however you want to word it, um, I just think Jesus has been through it all. He's had the exact same emotions and experience that we had, but like mm-hmm. more than we could ever imagine. Like you said, all you want to do is just sit down and have some water. Like Jesus had all the reason to quit and all the reason just to not give in to what he had for temptation. Mind you, this is where he even started his ministry, man, for 40 days. Yeah. Like, now I got to go. <laughs> and, now I got to go and teach 12 outcasts and how to heal people and how yeah. to live live boldly like I do and literally go and save the world now and die on a cross. Like you think about all the things that he went through in his lifetime, even just those three years of his ministry, like he's been through everything. And that's one thing that I just want to say to everybody listening out here. I know Blaine can really relate. It's like, like you may think, well, Jesus ain't out here running 50 miles or half marathon for me or doing strongman competitions or coding things like Blaine does for work every day, or I work in surgery, vice versa for our situations, but like the emotions that we feel and the the temptation to quit and things that the enemy is trying to lurk into our mind with, like we've all been there and we can sometimes say, well, Jesus doesn't understand. Like, yes, he does. He's been in those situations with his own experience and none of that, but he's in everything. Like he hones all the power. He's seated yeah. at the right hand of God. Yeah. That to me, like um, the last year has just been like this season of, of being uncomfortable and doing doing harder things, not just do things because they're hard, but um, doing things I know are good for me. And there's a lot of lessons out of it and they're going to be hard (laughs) and no party wants to do it. Um, But I'm doing it because one, I'm kind of learning who Jesus was. Yeah. Jesus didn't run a hundred miles, but he did some pretty, pretty crazy things like 40 days fast in the world. (laughs) He's experienced a lot in his short lifetime and Part of me doing this hard stuff is to just kind of almost not match it, but just get it. Like mm-hmm. it makes me understand him more and like respect it more too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. And, you know, we talk about kind of experiencing the trials and tribulations and kind of the temptations of this world here. Um, I kind of want to touch on a topic that, um, you know, so many people just question on if they're not a believer. And that topic is abstaining from sex until marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, It's something that a lot of people in my circle and your circles, all of us in Elevate in general, um, you know, we've really honed into that of waiting for sex until marriage. Um, And I know it's something that you have recently chose to abstain from and something to really hone into. Um, talk to the listeners kind of a little bit about your experience through that and what like kind of was the main prompting for that and just to someone maybe on the fence about it listening what they can take into consideration so um it's rooted back in that story i shared earlier of this is not who god made me to be as someone who's a christian um i know better and I could try all the, all the stupid excuses. Oh, well, the Bible isn't that, you know, whatever on it. Like, dude, you know, and I knew, and it, it just took a really negative experience for me to flip the switch. Absolutely. And for me, like I, I had a a few months where 
like I was single and then I had a girlfriend. And then um, when I met my girlfriend, like she, she was still a virgin and it was very easy to abstain because she didn't, she, she's never been like dishonored like that. Me as a provider and or more of a protector in that relationship, like that's the worst thing I could ever do to this chick for my own pleasure. Like that's awful. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that almost two years we dated, it was, it was very easy to just be like, no, yeah, we're not doing that. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, it really comes down to identity. Like I, I know who I am. I know I am the son of God, not Jesus, but a son of God. And that if I want to have a better relationship with him, I just need to do as he says, like, I like how my friend Joel puts it, like he's got six kids and he, he tells his kids, like, I don't want you to know my rules. I want you to know me. Right. And the more I want to know God, Jesus, the same way that I want to know people in life, why would I do things that they don't want me to do? Like, is that really me wanting to get to know them? Like you, like we're friends. If you ask me not to do something and I do it, like that's going to tarnish our relationship. If I really want to be friends with you, Austin. I'm going to listen to you and not like go over your boundaries. So why do we do it with God? Like, yeah, there's going to be things we want to do naturally. That's just how we are as sinful people. But we have to know where that line is. And if we really care about your relationship with God, then you should honor those decisions. Mm -hmm. I agree 100 percent. I love it because it's, it's that free will at the end of the day that we have to choose. Like you said, like why? Like like you and I are friends. And you said if one of us oversteps boundaries, that's going to hurt the relationship. And our relationship with Jesus is the most important relationship we're ever going to have it doesn't matter who your wife is doesn't matter who your kids are like um obviously that stuff's important like everybody in your life is important it's a blessing but it's like but jesus is king man like that's that's the ultimate number one and it's like we we naturally just fall short and we you know sit here and be like well i'm not gonna listen to that because i just i, I want to give me my fleshly desire i i disagree with that i i want what's now what's tangible and not what's in the the eternal life to come um, it's just such a mindset. And, and I love how you said identity too. It's, it's misalignment. Like a lot of times guys may come and elevate and they may be like, okay, well, you know, I don't feel the spirit moving in me or I don't feel close to God. I messed up here. It's like, we all break it down to identity. It's like living in alignment with who you're placed here to be. Mm -hmm. And I love how we broke down your story to be able to show these listeners, like you found your identity through so many different things that has just keeps refining you into like the son of God that God wants you to be. And another step uh, towards that is abstaining from sex till marriage. It sounds like. Yeah. And um, you know, like some people really struggle with like alcohol, like to me, lust is one of those things. Mm -hmm. So the best way for me to like take care of it. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just abstain from it. Like I, I don't need it. Um, it's, it's not easy. I'll be honest. It's not easy, but I, lean in on Jesus to help me with that. Yep. And I think, um, you know, it's, it, you talk about like lust and kind of falling into that. Um, I personally have fallen into that as well as like, like alcohol is not my cope, you know, drinking is not my, or uh, drugs are not my cope, but it's like lust was something that I struggled with for so long. And, uh, you know, having, I think it makes it easier too, when you know, you have a bunch of friends around you that are, you know, you're not just the outcast, like, um, mm -hmm just sitting here being like, well, guys, I'm abstaining from sex. It's like, well, you're a weirdo for that. Like, I'm not going to be friends with you because of that. It's like, but once I started seeing like, like Matt was doing it, Peyton was doing it, I felt the conviction to do it, but I didn't want to be the one to step out and be like, yeah, I think this is what I need to do. And then I start hearing, like, I talked to Gabe about it. Gabe's doing that, and Joey. And it's like so many other guys that are just in like both of our circles that are there goes back to the like-minded community of having accountability partners at the end of the day too. Yeah. And, you know, as you're talking, it just helped me think like, it's good to talk about it too. Like, okay. So I, I have just in this call right now, I have told everyone I have abstaining from sex. <laughs> um, if someone, one of you guys sees me doing it, like I am now tarnishing that relationship with every one of those, of those people. Mm -hmm. So I like even talking about it amongst friends who agree in the same stuff, like will help you not do it no matter what it is. Yep. 
And I think one thing that I was thinking of as you're just saying that too, is like the blessings that come about from it too. And the relationships built alongside that too, is like so many people be like, if say they do commit to this and then they mess up or any situation for that point of like, whether it's quitting pornography, abstaining from sex, stopping drinking, et cetera. Um, so many people are like, I fell into this. I feel so shameful. God doesn't love me. It's like, no, God loves you. You just got to repent and change and confess it to him. It's just, you fell short. Your blessings aren't, you know, your blessings may not be as big now because you didn't stay true to that. Um, you know, and, and that's just what I've really saw is like, God wants to bless us. He wants to give us all that we, we want when our heart posture is aligned with him and our identity is in him. It's just a matter of if we remain obedient to him, because if we remain obedient in, in his word and just sitting here listening to this word um, and obeying what it says, I feel like the blessings just rain down that much more. Exactly. Yeah. And to touch on that, um, you know, if you're constantly struggling, like first thing you can do is just go to God. Like if, if you have a kid and your kid keeps messing up, you're going to really want your kid to come to you about those problems. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you're also a father and you notice your kid keeps having these problems and is going to you, but you notice they're not ever trying to fix the problem. Well, then that's when you have to go and tell them to do something. And that's kind of how God works too. If you keep falling in sin with drugs, with alcohol, you keep sleeping with girls, keep getting hooked into Tinder and stuff. Are you doing it because you feel good um, and have not learned your lesson? Do you really, <laughs> are you really taking God's word and just repenting every time you do it? Um, or you're actually trying to get off it. Like those are also two very big things to think about too. Well said brother. Well said. I could have said it better myself. Um, I'm just so glad we're touching on that and just kind of, I, I like to think of it as like for you and me in even like in, in like girls in the sense, like a father daughter relationship, father son relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one thing that's really helped me with my relationship with God, because growing up from a religious standpoint, I didn't understand relationship. Like you said, when there's problems, when there's struggles, when there's trials, um, God wants to like help you in that situation, whether that's putting a community like Elevate in your life um, mm -hmm. or if it's just somebody in general or him himself that wants to have a one on one conversation with you. It's like he's going to work and intervene, but you have to let him in and know that it's just like a father son relationship for those that are listening or father daughter in that sense. Um, yeah, so that's one thing I really want to send out to listeners here is that if you're struggling to get into kind of the relationship aspect of what Jesus has to offer you that me and Blaine are talking about here. Just think about it from like a father son relationship or father daughter relationship. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's helped me a lot too. Cause, um, I mean, I, I didn't really get as a kid, but like now I'm getting older. I'm thinking like, how would I act as a father? Like I would want my kids to come to me with issues, mm -hmm. but also would like my kid to take my advice. <laughs> if I tell them, Hey, you're going to, if you keep doing this, you're going to keep messing up, like stop doing it. If they keep doing it. And it's like, how <laughs> you're making it hard on yourself. Why? <laughs> so. For sure. God's looking down at all of us every day being like, you guys would just listen to me. It'd be a lot yeah. less hard on you. <laughs> yeah, you haven't changed anything. Like just make a, change something. So you don't keep doing this. Literally. Yeah. Just call it to me. I'll come help you. <laughs> Amen. Well, dude, I kind of want to wrap up this interview. With just uh, two last questions here about elevate. You know, you've, you've been in and out of Elevate now. You've gotten to know quite a bit of guys in there. And I just got this one question that I ask everybody and Matt and Peyton do that we interview. And it's, uh, if you could get lunch with four Elevate members, who are they going to be? Man, that's a good question. Well, if only I had lunch with Matt, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to have lunch with you and Peyton. But who else? I've noticed Jeremy. I, I think he's been a new member lately. And uh, he's been on fire with Twitter and stuff. I would like to have lunch with him. And um, I need another one. I think Isaac, is that his name Isaac? Yep, Isaac like Winters. Stuff. Yeah, I've noticed Great you too. Guy. I know you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I'll be seeing him this weekend, so I'll be sure to let him know he wants yeah. to get, that you want to get lunch with him. <laughs> I love it, man. So Isaac, myself, Peyton, and Jeremy. Yeah. Love it. That's awesome, dude. And uh, one last question I got here to wrap up. If someone is listening to this interview, considering joining Elevate like yourself, what would be your advice to them? My advice, um, you know, if you don't have a group, 
you need someone um, because if you if you have no one, you're someone else, some other group is going to get your attention. Um, so have a group that is a good spiritually based uh, set of guys to do that for you. So elevated to one. If you're in our age group, was it like eighteen to eighteen to pretty much forty at this point? <laughs> yeah, even, even beyond 10. that, <laughs> guys. Um, almost yeah, yeah, I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, if your place is online, if you're constantly on Discord, if you um, lack a group of people around you, and you really want to be in on like, you want people around you who are Christ, Christ based, I guess, Christ pill, like this is the place to be. Love it, dude. Couldn't have said it better myself. Just one one thing too, I got, you know, where can guys find you or anybody that's listening to this interview for that matter, if they want to follow your endurance journey? Um, or just follow you in general or connect, where can they find you at? Uh, right now it's just Twitter and Instagram. I'll blast whatever I feel like I want to talk about on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blaine Bercy, I think it's at Blaine Bercy and same on Instagram. That one's rather new though. So I don't really post on it. I just follow people. Um, but if I do a big event, I'll post on that one. Love it. Love it. Yeah. For anybody listening, follow this guy. Cause I mean, I've, I've seen the athletic savage that he is before his endurance journey and now seeing him <laughs> into endurance is something so inspirational to watch. So for all that are listening, tune into Blaine's <laughs> journey, seriously, because things are going to go far with him. And just uh, I appreciate you with this interview, brother. It's just been so fruitful to be able to talk about your your journey through Elevate, your journey through life in general, and just a lot of the circumstances you've been dealt with and just how you've overcame them, really leaned into your gifts and, and built it on a firm foundation of God. It's just been something so special. Can't wait to get you on here for more to come. Yeah, man, this was fun. I'm glad we got to have this one because uh, <laughs> you definitely asked some good questions that, <laughs> that pulled a lot out of me. I, like, I haven't even considered that. So yeah, this was fun. that's was why cool. we're here, man. Find that relatability and just challenge you a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate all you guys tuning in and we will see you for the next one. Peace. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Austin.